this, look at this. I went right into it. Oh, slicing and dicing. Son of a... Yeah. Hey, what's going on, you tubulous? EXO coming at you here. Trudging through another wild one lately. Had some pretty amazing news earlier last month, too. Oh, thought we found the perfect place. They even accepted our offer, but holy crap, the home inspection came back so dang bad that the seller just pulled it off the market completely. So it was a huge waste of time and money. Luckily, Elise works at a hotel, so we've been jumping room to room, really trying to make another deal work. I don't want to jinx it by saying too much. So let's just go ahead and dive right back into the behemoth build with another full length spread. Last time we left off with a nice flush cut on all the filled areas. That made the B pillar panels nice and flat, ready for a solid layer of beef to go on top. To get just the right amount of taper into shape though, I simply measured across every four inches going vertically. By marking each line in a row, the curve comes out automatically with a quick game of connect the dots. Nice gradual curve, nothing special, just needs to fit. love knocking on things. That's pretty much what I do everywhere I go. I am going to grab some more PL because that's what's going to be behind this, a whole bunch of that, and then I'll pound it right back into place. And because it's so dang tight, I can leave it the way it is. No screws will be needed. The clamping will be done by the pressure of both the steel and the B-pillar. It'll just wedge itself right in there, and then the glue will dry right as rain. Too bad if I do say so myself. The first part of the panel is underway and matching up perfectly on both sides. Smooth transitions galore. Gotta love that, I'm feeling real good. And now I'm looking at things and I think it's plausible to add a second layer. So have this be the first of two because if I remove this little thing from my seat belt, it makes a lot of noise anyways. And I think I'm gonna have one common anchor point from now on. That will give me three quarters of an inch. That's perfect for a whole nother layer of birch wood. So that way it'll be even stronger than I first anticipated, even though we had to change gears into doing just wood instead of all that kitty hair and fiberglass. So we'll move on to the passenger side while that stuff dries up a little bit, then we'll do the lower section. But this has another little section that's in the way, so we'll do some cutting around some of those things that are sticking out.
With all those big chunks out of the way, the passenger side B pillar really isn't too bad. The gap between the two surfaces up front is just small enough to fill with scraps, so a simple repeat of last time will seal them up real easy. Now onto this next piece, which has a little more detail in front. The gap is getting tighter, so it'll be easiest to break it up into thirds. There we go, that's a pretty nice fit there too. Now, I can't go all the way up because once you reach about this point, there's a half inch hump. So instead of planing the remaining three inches, we'll just fill it up with an extra little piece, but she's fitting in real good. And that will complete this side all sealed up real strong. So I had to bring this one down here a little bit just because she was bulging out it right in the way. Brought her down, now she's perfectly flush so we can fit that little piece right in. it huh front part of the box is all sealed off bam there is no leaking pressure going through them suckers i'll tell you that right now the electrical conduit is still nice and open so we can reach through all of our wires and overall i'd say a second layer of wood will be a perfect topper here maybe even with maybe maybe even with a little bit of added angle iron but obviously and sadly we don't have any more wood here we've depleted our full stockpile of our spare bin so we'll have to head down to 252 justin's where all our fresh 13 ply is right there waiting for us all right here we are back at the shop good old 252 customs coming in hot you know what time it is, time to get busy. Now it's time, since we have all the wood at our disposal, we can start doing some more cutting because the top, both sides, and the bottom, that is the next step that needs to take place. We're gonna cut each section as large as we can. That way, later on down the road, when we figure out exactly how big the box design is gonna be, we can trim it to size perfectly. And yes, I know, I still need to trim the rest of that foam flush, but hey, I had to get here, and now we're working hard. Steel. So I just need to be nudged. We need to go forward, forward, yeah. All right, she's on the lip. 
Tapping right here. I bet that this would be a good shot to get right here. This is fun. Going in slowly right there. Here she comes. She's going. About an inch left. Eighth of an inch. There we go, sixteenth of an inch. All right, well, it's hard to imagine that all this work is just for a test fit, but you gotta make sure that everything lays down flat because once we do some body filling, there'll need to be just a little bit of a bevel, blah, 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 a little bit of a beveled edge here. So that's what we'll add once we get it out of here for the last time. And then that'll leave room for all the glue and the PL that we plan on adding as well. Just to give you a quick visual here, what I was just talking about, we did the same thing on the floor. So that'll give us a little area to use as a fill spot. And obviously I think it goes without saying that this is just loosely fitted like before. So it has a little bit of a sag in it. So once we get the screws in there, everything will be nice and flush like everything else. Just trying to give herself some more breathing room with a quick shave. 30 second will help, right? <laughs> Hopefully I have my image stabilization on, guys. <laughs> All right, so what we're doing now is laying out all the information that corresponds to the roof. There's steel and wood that we need to know where it is. As a team, we're just gonna lay this, this panel out together. So I'm ready when you are, man. All right, passing the side, front to back. Zero, three quarters. Three quarters. 12 and a quarter. 12 and a quarter. 13 and three quarters. 13 and three quarters. 16 and a quarter. 16 and a quarter. 15 and three quarters. 15 and three quarters. 13 and a quarter. 13 and a half. 13 and a half. 13 and a half. 44 and a half. 44 and a half. Driver's side, front to back. Three quarters. 12 and a quarter, 13 and a quarter, 16 and a quarter, 17 and three quarters, 28 and three quarters, 35 and a quarter, 44 and three quarters. All right, well I bet that sounded pretty funny, right? A whole squirrely voice, I did a little time lapse there. But as a little team, we plotted out all the, the important spots. Now we just gotta do some tracing like a kindergarten class. Sit up there and shoot slide right in this time. Okay. Get this out of oh yeah. Yeah, let's come back a little. Hold on, man. Ready? Yeah, she's she's going, I think. Here we go. All the way? Yeah, she's in all the way. If you're wondering why we're doing this without glue, this is also a part of the test fit process because when the other pieces come in, you need the top to be very, very tight or else it'll be sagging and mess with your dimensions, which are crucial. Measure once, measure once, measure twice, cut once, right? So that's why everything needs to be very, very tight against the wall. So a couple screws it is in each corner. See, I don't know if you can see it on video, but even just by looking at it, you can see that the seam has uh, increased. So that means that we gained a little bit more for our baffle, and that's an extremely tight tolerance. We're working with just like an eighth of an inch of leeway on both sides, and with 318s going across, that's very, very little. Ah uh, yes, gotta love drilling into that metal. It does give you a nice old workout. I'm not complaining though. So instead of boring you guys with the same step, what, three more times with doing the monotonous kind of thing, just uh, picture us doing a little movie magic and we'll fast forward here probably a good couple hours while we get 
all the remaining sides done. Cause it's a repeat of what you just saw. So let's do some editing magic, huh? Actually, I figured I'd pop in real quick just to give you a quick update on this next part because it's been pretty crucial for me, especially with all the math that I've had to work around this damn thing. It's been a pain in the butt. The wheel well. We're actually going to maybe do something a little bit unique with possibly tapping into her because the baffle needs to be straight down. 57 can't have a taper in it. That would hit the freaking gas can is like right here where you fill up. So we need to be very strategic. And so we have the taper on this side going flat and then just a little bit of a inch and seven eighths of a difference so we can make up for it with a perfect fitment over the wheel well. Then we'll worry about what's beneath it. So next up, I knew it was going to be a super close fit for the baffle, but it gets really close. I'll go through all the math right now because the next couple clips become a big time turning point. After all, pulling the trigger on the baffle means going forward with a particular design and it's been really hard to choose. Behind the scenes, I've been crunching numbers on a crazy front firing sixth and fourth order, debated on a stack fab setup like that, but ultimately went with a sixth order for its real signature qualities. A single reflex bandpass may be louder for certain SPL formats, but a series tune bandpass tends to dig a bit deeper and run a bit cooler how I like. That type of baffle would also lay out side to side and floor to ceiling. We just need to find a way to impose that size of a rectangle onto today's video screen. Here's a handy little tool that both draws and estimates the max number of circles that a given space can contain. Even if the layout is kind of limited for us, it will still illustrate accurately sized circles, our subs, within the rectangle, our baffle. Then we can reposition things around as we please. You'll notice an important tidbit at the bottom though, which explains the tools quite simple and how several more circles can be added if you stray outside equal gaps. In other words, this program can only space things out equally from one side, not optimally on all sides. We'll have to do that ourselves. So let's import this layout onto a nice white background. Zoom in a little bit. Heck, even at second or third glance, it does look kind of impossible to fit any more circles on here. But watch what happens when we manually shift outside equidistant gaps. Talk about an optical illusion, huh? Making the footprint wider automatically increases usable height. Nestling a third row of 18s below the second row is now totally doable. But what about all these new slivers? Let's calculate those. We know there's one inch on the side and 16.75 for the cutout. We don't know what this is yet. Another 16.75. Another mystery sliver plus 16.75 and the final one inch for the remaining side. Adding those up is 52 and a quarter, which subtracted from the total of 57 is 4.75. That means these two surfaces combined are 4.75 inches. So individually 2.375. Following the same logic to calculate and fill in the other areas. And with a simple transposed view, it's definitely possible for the subs to fit, but oh man, this new gap in between isn't very big, son of a salamander. The baskets would obviously need a shaving on a couple corners. Either that, we could offset the middle ones above the others. Eh, pretty standard stuff when trying to fit this much into one space. Without having too much room for ports though, we gotta get creative on that too. A good way to maximize port area in this case is using the baffle itself as part of the port. So instead of sticking an arrow port or a regular slot port in there, which would drastically limit size, I'm gonna open up the port as much as possible all the way to the outer shell. That's a single common wall in terms of port layout, but an opening that spans the complete distance now. To calculate the port area for this crazy looking shape though, I just break it all down into easier shapes. If you look closely, there's a bunch hiding in plain sight, a square here, a couple dry 
triangles there. I add those up for a ballpark idea, subtracting a pretty conservative number for the missing bits. So all in all, this port layout is roughly 250 square inches. Whew, a little smaller than I'd like for 48 cubes, even though a Series 2 and Bandpass does tend to like smaller rear ports. This does have me on the fence now, especially because I'd probably stick a couple braces in there too. So we have been doing some crazy number crunching, smashing our heads together, trying to bust through this little brain fart because a lot of the dimensions are so tight that the wheel well is like a make it or break it situation. So we're over here being like, man, do we even, do we even want to mess with this? So we're like, man, should we pound it? Should we shave it? Should we cut it? Or should we work around it? So right now, the verdict is in. We've tried to work around it with a, a, a kind of unconventional method here. Do you notice anything about how everything is fitting together? Let me know if you see it, but either way, this is gonna be pretty interesting. <laughs> Okay, so here's how everything's breaking down. Even though I spent a ton of time tuning up, tuning up, tuning up a front-facing six with eight subs, the wheel well on the driver's side just keeps saying no. So I had to switch directions. Even though it is technically possible, it would be at the cost of these seven drawbacks. Number one, I'd either have to cut my baskets or number two, mount the middle row on top of the others using an offset method. Not ideal really, because if anything happened to the top or bottom row, the middle ones would have to come out every single time. Number three, even after gutting the wheel wells fully, there can still only be a half inch of beef on the baffle's edge. Yikes, that's pretty small for such a big baffle. Number four, since the front chamber's port would have to be so massive and open, Having the two rear ports firing from the side into that lengthy opening without much of a boundary does raise questions for possible loading issues. The quarter wavelength to the next nearest boundary, the windshield, could end up giving me grief. Number five, there's really not enough port area for proper testing. Usually you would start big and shrink to find your sweet spot, but with this design, the port would already be like end range small. So that means giving up the chance to test larger ports altogether. Number six, weight distribution. Having all the heaviest stuff located in one area isn't exactly best for driving. Set up like that, the batteries, amps, and subs would all be located way up back, not evenly spread out whatsoever. And lastly, number seven, a front firing baffle is also the most pain in the to mount heavy subwoofers into when you're all by yourself holding up a hundred pounds, pinching your fingers while you lay some screws down is not terribly fun. So with these reasons adding up fast, switching the design altogether makes more sense than dealing with seven drawbacks. Luckily, I have a backup design that potentially avoids all these pesky problems. end of the day you gotta do what makes you happy right <laughs> this is the result of that just laid her down and called it good yeah i know it may be a super popular layout at the moment but honestly it gives me everything that i'm looking for the only drawbacks that i see in my mind are actually some welcome changes for instance this layout has such a long pathway sonically speaking that the tuning will be inherently low, the peaks may be too. So depending on how high the front chamber and the cabin can be tuned to once built, SPL above 40 Hertz may suffer as a result of resonant frequencies and certain distances not playing nicely together. Hopefully I'll be able to mitigate those symptoms with a little quarter wave combat of my own. Here's what I'm thinking. With this long distance spanning across the vehicle, the lowest quarter wavelength that will still physically fit inside is 23 Hertz. I've measured that by going from the rear port all the way to the windshield, which is 145 inches. The full wave is 93 Hertz and the quarter wave is 23 Hertz. That means I'll try starting out by tuning the rear port to 23 Hertz. 
That way I can tune the front chamber a full octave higher at 46 hertz. And get this, that leaves us with a perfect 74 inches of spacing between the rear port and the front port, which just so happens to be the quarter wavelength of 46 hertz our second tuning frequency it should even out to be a pretty nice alignment both helm holtz and quarter wave wise so in a perfect world if our cabin peaks somewhere in the mid to upper 40s as well there should be a decent max spo on the second peak of the pass band but whatever happens happens i'm always willing to test out the bugs i just know that within the constraints of the build this design is exactly what i'm shooting for Sometimes you just got to go with the flow because that front facing design could have really built me into a corner having limited ways to dial in. I'm actually super stoked on this laid back six. All right, so here we are the next day and we have done a lot of stuff behind the camera because it's just been nonstop working, measuring, cutting and fitting. Look right down on the ground here. It's the start of the baffle. We're gonna go five layers thick. So right now the transposition of the data is taking place. The squares crisscrossing for our pilot marks for each individual hole. There's gonna be 12 18s. So we need to have them perfectly positioned because we're doing multiple baffles separately. So once we layer them on top, the holes need to match up. So that's what we're doing right now. So we're gonna tag team this thing. I'll grab the back of it and I'll walk out toward you and then we'll just put it somewhere safe in the garage, okay? To the right? Yeah, to the, well, to your, yeah. yeah. To my right? Yeah. Okay. Nice, good job. Put her in right here. And there she is, all laid out. It's looking a lot bigger now in contrast to everything behind it. And that just goes to show we need to clean this space before we can really lay it out. But holy crap, look at the plot. She's beautiful. 12, 18. Guys, hold her up, Pete. Got her helping out today. So I, that's a big thumbs up for that. Doing a little tag team work here. So there she is. It's going to be five layer six. So the two you see now are just the beginning. We need to do more layers. You could do a thinner baffle with lots of bracing, but I'm going to do a slightly thicker baffle with bracing just for that overkill status to make sure that this plane does not flex at all. So we got a lot more circles to cut, a lot more. so she'll fall right through otherwise, but I'm keeping this clip. I know it's a mistake, but I have some beautiful glory shots coming up through the baffle. So we'll have to go ahead and press rewind on this, but who cares? Reposition the bottom pieces with the top pieces so we can do our tracing and cutting, man. Ah, uh, it's always something.
All right, got about a dozen two inch screws holding this trifecta together, so it should be good to flop over now. flush trim bit with a router. We're gonna do that after the fact. So I know this may look a little weird and daunting at first, but don't worry, this will be actually perfect in the end. Son of a yeah! I thought the saw just started to have a funny color. <laughs> I went right into it, all oh, slicing and dicing in true fashion. That's all right though, you win some, you lose some. Just another casualty of the build. So I can start piecing more and more layers together without this falling apart. This is really crucial. I'm just gonna go ahead and glue these two together so that way it's not too, too heavy. We can start layering in more and more after that. That should do it, my friends. Every hole is cut. Well, rough cut at least, right? The router will make it all flush and perfect. Honestly, I'm just happy to see all this stuff laid out. A couple hours with the misses, some music jamming in the shop, makes cutting over a half a football field worth of circles not so bad. 
The other layers will glue on as we go, staggering the seams for triple, quadruple, then finally quintuple stack baffles. And as much as I'm pumped and excited for all this, these days have been kind of bittersweet. Today marks the official last 10 nights sleeping in this house, no more renting, no more moving. Halla freaking luya. It's been a huge pain in the butt relocating every time a landlord wants us to. This is the second time in a row where the place we stay goes up for sale while we're living there. No thank you anymore. Can't sell the place if we're the ones who own it, right? And now for today's trivia challenge, what would you rather have? Unlimited skill or unlimited money? And by unlimited skill, I mean everything. You could play music, speak languages, perform surgeries, anything skill-based. And by unlimited money, I mean zillions and zillions, constantly refreshing every time you spend. So what would it be? Unlimited skill or unlimited cash? Here's some honorable mentions from last time when we asked what single sentence would you tell yourself 10 years in the past? The number one top rated comment goes to Original Elbow Tactics, coming with the humor, saying his advice would be stay single. <laughs> oh boy, we've all been there, right? But he's laughing, so it's all in good fun. Probably had a terrible ex or something like that. Either way, thanks for playing, man. I just replied to your comments so I can ship a little something to you. Another big thanks to everyone here watching right now. Hey, how's it going? Making these videos is a monumental effort. I hope the extra touches with editing make it entertaining for you. After today's video though, I'm gonna start posting more often but with slightly less pizzazz. Expect more one-on-ones, updates, and videos where we tackle one thing at a time more often. In the meantime, we'll finish the big move to Tennessee, packing and unpacking for another round three. Hey. hey. That rhymed, didn't it? Also, remember to hit up the Showtime Electronics website for everything car audio. Using your EXO coupon code helps you, helps me, helps everybody. So until next time, this is EXO signing out. Stay loud and stay proud. I will talk to you in the next one. Hey, 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 hey.